Bob's Barbecue is at the location that Jenny raises. It's actually the same building, the same design and everything. They didn't really change a lot of it. The, ba the heydays of the town was when uh, Notre Dame would have a uh, football game and the Greyhound buses would come through here and they would stop at Bob's Barbecue for dinner before they would go to the football game and stop at Bob's Barbecue afterwards and, uh, and eat before they went back to Chicago or wherever they were going. But it was really busy. I mean, I can remember the cars backed up all over the place down there. And I think all the kids when I was young that were old enough worked out there. When I was in high school and worked at the barbecue, there would be just, people would be lined up all the way around the building to get in to eat. It was extremely busy and we would have busloads of people. But at that time, the intersection was still right there by Bob's Barbecue. They hadn't moved the highway out yet. I would work after school, and I worked Saturdays and Sundays, and on Saturday nights I wouldn't get off work until 3 o'clock in the morning. And then the next morning I'd go in and open, help open up for the breakfast, Sunday breakfast so that I'd have sa Sunday afternoon off to get my schoolwork done. But we would just be so, so busy. And there was... Uh a motel behind it and there were cabins behind it and we would rent the rooms for the motel. You know, 13 years old, <laughs> motel rooms and hotel, the cabins and stuff. And it was like $6 a night for a cabin, $5 a night for the motel room. I can remember him telling, laughing one time about he had been robbed a couple of times. This was in the 40s and so his father was going to stand guard for him and so he was going to sleep there all night for him. He curled up underneath one of the booths with a shotgun and the people came in and snuck in and robbed the place and he was just sound asleep with the shotgun. <laughs> so he got to work, went in the next morning and he's robbed again but his dad, <laughs> dad was sound asleep. <laughs> Bob Riley, uh, I remember, uh, see I was probably 16 years old. I got a Model A Ford, and uh, we'd always go out there and get a, get a Coke, you know. And uh, it was like quarter to 11 at night, and the state trooper says, well, he looked at his watch, and he said, you know, he said, uh, 15 minutes is curfew time, you better get home. Yes, sir. So we get out in the car, and we saw him take his car and go into the port, one, two. So we... This guy said, what the hell do we have to do that for? Why don't we just, let, let's go back and get another Coke. So we did. I turned around and I parked the car, went up there, and I got my Coke, and I got one sip of it, and that state trooper, trooper took me. By the, you know, nap the neck, see the pants, and led me across his car and paddled me in front of people. Think what happened today if they did that, you know. But I, I idolized him. It was, you know, it was still going in this. Late in the 60s, there was still stuff, you know, a little bit of a restaurant there. But it was lots of places for parking there, and it was right on the highway. It was, it was quite the booming place. There used to also be, or where the school is now, across the street from that was a big restaurant that was very uh, classy restaurant at that time. It was the Peacock Inn. That was, a, it was an actual inn built probably back in the 20s or, or 30s. It uh, was owned by a fellow named Offenbacher. He had landscaped the place, he had trees, ornamental trees that you wouldn't find around here, uh, ginkgos and buckeyes and different things that everybody didn't have in their yard. Uh, he had fish ponds, uh, a gazebo that was built up on a hill, big apple orchards, uh, cottages, there was half a dozen cottages around there. Uh, the old horse stables where they put the horses and they, uh, the wagons for, for overnight if you wanted to stay. Oh yes, that was very popular and they had the Peacock Fountain Inn and they had the other restaurant so they had two places and he had it real fancy and oh yes. It was a nice place to eat and of course we had, they had room for the dance and like that so. I can remember seeing pictures where they actually had peacocks in the yard and there was the most beautiful 
fish pond there when I used to ride my bicycle when I was a kid. We'd always stop and look at the fish in the fish pond. It just amazed me that there were lights up in the tree. I couldn't figure out how in the world they could have. They were like Christmas lights up in the tree. And my aunt and uncle, uh, Fred and Teresa Nicholas, bought the old Peacock Fountain Inn. When we took it over and opened it up, we opened it up as a restaurant that was reservation only. We only took larger parties. I think 10, 10 or more was the smallest we would go. Uh, a lot of weddings, anniversaries, graduations, uh, office party, a lot of office parties. Alice Chalmers used to have a lot of their office parties out there. Uh, we could seat 200 people in the large dining room and 100 people in the small dining room. Uh, they specialized in uh, chicken and ham. Everything was family style. So you got two vegetables and your potatoes and uh, homemade, everything had homemade rolls. They did that till uh, we closed up about 1960.